So forms are a great way to request information from your users. When you want your users to engage with your app so that they can send over information or not only them send over information, but you can also have Glide send information about that user. How does a form work? It pretty much creates a new row somewhere in your spreadsheet. So ideally, in most cases, we will have a specific tab in our spreadsheet where those forms will go over to. So let's set up a form. The first step is that you have to be in a details style page, right? We cannot start a form if we are looking at a list, any type of list, because we cannot add components to that list. Now, when we are in a detail style page, when we're looking at a certain row, then users can create a new form. So the first thing you have to do is add the form component. So on your top right, click the plus sign, then we can look for a form, which is a form button. So you click this, right? So we have the open form button now in our screen. Now, before doing anything else, I want to set up my spreadsheet, my Google Sheet tab, where the information provided by that user will go, right? So if I go over to my spreadsheet, I already have a forms tab. Let's put it in red. So I have here my spreadsheet. It's a blank. It's empty, right? So let's, let's ask three different questions. So question one, question two, question three. Now, as I said earlier, we can ask users for information, but Glide can bring over information about that user. The pretty much what we always need is that user's email address. We can only do that as long as our app is public with email or a whitelisted app. Otherwise, if it's just a public app, then there's no way for Glide to know that user's email. But if users are logging into the app with their email, then we can bring that value, that, that email address to this spreadsheet. In most cases, we want to do that because we want to know who is answering that form. So in this case, I'm going to add email. And then there are some other special values. A, probably the most important is the timestamp when that form was created. And we can also assign a unique ID, a unique value, which I always add just in case later on we want to do relations or some other things. So unique ID, which is UID. Right. So we have set up our form step where the forms will fall, will create new rows. Right. So if I go back to Glide, I hit the reload sheet because I added information in my spreadsheet. And then I can click this form. Then the first thing I have to do is point the destination tab, the destination sheet, where will that form go in my Google Sheet. So we want to point it to our forms tab that we just created, right? So as you can see, Glide already shows every single column that we created in that tab. It sh Glide shows that here. We have all these components. So I will delete all of those because I, will, I want to start from scratch. So the first thing I want to have is the user's email. And I don't want to ask that user for their email, but I want Glide to bring that email over to my spreadsheet. So you can see here, if I scroll down, we have special values. And the third one is the user's email address. So I'll click this and then I will point this value, this user's email address to my column named user email. I will add another special value, which is the unique value, unique ID, which is the UID. And again, I want to point this to the 
column I named UUID. I also want to have a timestamp for when each user fills out that form. Again, the third and last special value we have is the current date and time. So I will click this and then this will go over to the timestamp column. So as you can see, the form is still empty, but we are already bringing over, creating a new row with this data. Now I want the data that the user will add to this form. So I will add a text entry component, which is this one, right? Text entry, and this will be answer A, and then we can have the title, and we can make it required or not. If we do, then the submit button will be grayed out until something is written here. Then we can have, so we added three questions. So let's make the second question a number entry. So this will go in answer B. We can have default values, we can have minimum and maximum values. Let's not complicate this. And then we had a third, yeah, we had a third question. So let's make that a true or false. So that is a switch. Then this will be on column C. The default value is off. And then let's, for title, we have answer C. And for description, you, you, like, glide, right? So now we have three questions that the, where we require answers from our users. Our first question is required. So until they have filled that out, the submit button is grayed out, right? They do have to answer that. Now they don't have to answer the other two. We have a text entry question, we have a number entry, and then we have a switch, which will make it a true or false. And then we have these special values. So for answer A, let's, for question A would be, I feel good. And then answer B is a number, so let's make it a 10. And then answer C, which is a switch, true or false, let's make it true, and then we click submit. The user only sees the send icon, right? But you as owner of the app, when you go over to your spreadsheet, let's reload this. When we go over to our spreadsheet to the forms tab, we see the answers, right? So Glide created a new row with those answers. I feel good, number, then the checkbox. And then we have the user email address, we have the timestamp, and then we have a unique ID, which is a special value that Glide creates. So that's how we set up a form. You can always edit this form, this button, if we click here, and then you can change the title. You can change the colors. And then you can always add visibility conditions, uh, which you will learn later on on to show this button only under certain conditions if the user matches certain conditions so that's how you set up a form